How's everyone doing this morning? I think we're going to be painting some weird colors. Is that what it was, Anne? Blending weird colors or painting weird colors? We're doing some weird colors either way. We are here for weird colors. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Reaper Pro Tips. This is Anne uh, live to you from California, where it feels earlier than it is. <laughs> but I have two doses of caffeine today, and so it's all going to be awesome. So um, we're going to work on colors today. I thought I was like looking, and I've got like these giants, and I've got so much going on. But I uh, I was kind of thinking about doing frost giant skin. And I realized that that was blending two completely different colors. It's like blending blue and pink for me. Um, and then I thought, well, why don't I just do weird colors and show you guys how it actually is possible to highlight any color with any other color and actually make them blend. Um, and so I thought I would do that and pick a couple of weird colors to try to highlight with each other. Um, let's see. What do we got here? What do we got? We got, we got people. Frost giant skin. So you want me to just do the blue and pink? Let's see. She doesn't have much skin showing is the problem, but I can do the face. It'll it just doesn't give us much uh, much room to show it because she doesn't have a whole lot of uh, of room to make it really blend. Um, great, glad to hear it, Cybstorm. Yeah, they use the same flake. So whenever you're highlighting a metallic, you can use uh, either a silver or gold depending on what color you're working with. So with green, you can see that it has a gold flake sparkle, so you can use a gold to highlight it. Um, and then with uh, things like our blue metallic, it's actually better to go uh, pearl white whenever you've got a strong color. But you can also highlight copper with, uh, with gold. Uh, you can also highlight with silver. It depends on what you're looking for. Anyway, mess around with that. I mean, pearl white is your default highlight for pretty much everything, though, as far as metallics. Ah, okay. Well, then we'll do, we'll do, uh, we'll do frost chain skin and we'll, we'll do our really weird color blending if we have time. Good morning, Daffod Weir. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, let me see then. What color would I want for frost chain skin? I bet I have a grayish blue in here. I do. I have ashen blue. That's a perfect frost chain skin. And then we want to do pink for, let me see. I have rosy skin, but I thought I had like Milani Rose from Pathfinder in here somewhere. Aha! I thought I kept it in. Yeah! All right, here we go. Doo -doo -doo. Boom. Yeah, exactly, Miss Dimp. Um, I'm getting blush on undead skin tone. Although that's kind of, it kind of defeats the purpose unless it's a vampire, right? Because when you add rosy tones to an undead skin, you make it look more lifelike. So you kind of have to watch that. I suppose if it's very green already, you're okay. Um, but it can be hard for that reason. So yeah, so let's try this. Let's try to highlight one with the other here. Um, it's something that most people would never do, uh, but it, uh, it can work um, for the frost giant skin. We can blend these two together uh, and see what we can do. And I can focus on where the blush tones would be on her. Um, if she's a little bit, I'm going to try to get her, I'm going to un, unlight for a second and see if I can get her to show up better. Let's see. Let's move this off camera. Let's get a focus on the face. No, that's fuzzy. You are going to work, camera. You are going to give us focus. All right, there we go. So now we've got some serious focus on the face. Oh, the ash and blue and Milani Rose, yeah. Well, ash and blue is just one of my favorite colors, period. All right, so let's paint close to the camera. Icky dookie. Now, um, mixing these, if you just straight up try to wet blend them, it doesn't work so well. So when you're trying to mix, when you're trying to, to uh, blend between colors that are very different, uh, like this, layering is usually your go-to. And you may do a mix somewhere in the middle. You usually need to, or a couple of them, to make it work. But you want to keep those a very small layer. So let's start by base coating her skin with ashen blue. Do -do -do. We'll start way over on this side of the palette. And Ashen Blue is 90.57. It is a pretty good base for Frost Giant skin if you don't want to go bright blue. I've never really liked bright blue Frost Giants. I like to go a little bit more muted. So we'll rock that. Let's see here. We'll just base coat with our regular brush. Not going to thin it. Going to use it straight up because it's a base coat on bones. Okay. 
And we'll just put this all together. I'll get her neck, although we're probably not going to touch it much. I do wish her, she had a bigger face or less hair around her face so that this would be a little, a little easier to show. Is there a difference between the MSP bones and Pathfinder pain lines? Uh, yeah, there is happy little minis. Um, quite extremely, uh, between Pathfinder and bones are very similar. They're formulated. The path, the Pathfinder line was formulated with bones tech, um, on purpose. Um, all of our newer lines are probably going to be formulated with bones technology, but core is not only does it have the specialty colors in it, like liners and clears and primers and sealers and flow improver, but core is also made to be a little less on coverage and more on versatility. Um, core was the line I created first. It also has tr the triad system in it. Core does, which means that every uh, three paints, you have a shadow midtone and a highlight in general. Some triads are just like colors. Like we have an off whites triad with three off whites in it. But in general, if you look at the core system on a rack, you're going to see that it goes in threes. Like you've got um, mahogany brown and uh, chestnut uh, brown and uh, uh, and I've just lost it. What my other one is in that triad, rust brown. And those are meant to work as a mid-tone shadow and highlight. So that's one of the advantages that core has. We do not do in our other lines. So if you are a new painter, it can help you with mixing. Um, and uh, the other thing with core is that the coverage varies depending on pigment, much like real artist paints do. Uh, I was less concerned with coverage in that line because mostly what we're looking for there is um, we want you to be able to build easy washes and easy glazes. Essentially, every my theory of paint line design is that you only need coverage for one stage, the base coat. After that, everything you do, you're thinning your paint. So why create a paint that's really thick and goopy and requires you to add a crap ton of water to it to make it usable as a wash or a glaze? Uh, when you can make a, a paint that might take two coats to cover, but then works great for everything else with minimal add-ons. So that's the difference. Bones, even then, even then, Bones and Pathfinder are not completely solid, goopy coverage paints. They're just slightly higher coverage. So that was what we were aiming for with those. Hello. Okay, so missed if I missed your first part of your comment, let me scroll back up here. Standard gray. Oh, bluish as opposed to standard gray. Oh, I see. Oh, bluish as opposed to the standard gray. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Fashionably late, Lord Dave, you may be fashionably late all you want. We are waiting for paint to dry as uh, it appears to be somewhat humid out here today. And uh, I don't use hair dryers on paint. I don't believe in it, so... We are going to let that set. And meanwhile, we will mix up maybe our first thing. So color mixes are key. This can get a little weird if you're doing something like a green and orange, which I was thinking of doing, but you guys wanted frost giant skins. So we're getting frost giant skin. Let me see what I might use. I could also try to do like those two. But in either case, you want to do a mix. So at least one mix. Usually I'll do two. I'll probably do like a 50-50 mix. We'll see how the colors phase out. You want, a color, you want a color that's halfway between the two. Even if it looks like ugly muck, you need that transition. The other way you can do it is to do something that's heavier on your blue and heavier on your pink and blend them that way. But let's take a look at what we get. The saying? Yeah. Wow, okay. I guess maybe I'm the only one who heard that. Discord turns you into a complete and utter robot for like oh, wow. 10, 10 seconds. Wow. Like I could not understand what you were saying. Discord did not like me. Hey, Solison83, thank you for the Twitch Prime. Are you new to the community? Are you, uh, are you just uh, really into painting? Yeah, hello, Solison. You are jonesing to paint? <laughs> well, it seems like we have a little bit more time to paint these days, some of us, so... Let's see here. I'm going to thin that down about three to one paint to water and take a look at it and see what color I've got here. We might have to rename this frost giant skin if that's all I do, Justin. I know we always love to make Justin rename streams. <laughs> Not a problem. 
I mean, it is weird colors, so it yeah. kind of fits. It's kind of an umbrella, you know? Yeah, it is making two weird colors go together. This is true. Or we could just put a little slash and go also Frost Giant skin. I don't know what would appeal more to the uh, to the painting audience. Yeah, I will. I'll do the green and the orange on another stream if not today. Yes, if your skin is blue, you've got a problem. Yes. Your editing work is slowly taking off. Good job, Planner. Greetings, Paul Johnslight. Planning a paint weekend, Quantum. That's an excellent plan. I also want to pa paint, plan a paint weekend because I'm really getting close to finishing a model and I want to just bust through it. I also just want to line around her face real quick. So something I do, people know this, I paint in sections. I like to um, base a face and then uh, line around it to kind of outline the forms. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a shadow between her hair and her face real quick just because it's my working process. Darn it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, the Twitch app is annoying, Midnight Painter, like for trying to sub for Twitch Prime. Um, do you remember how to do it, Justin? People ask all the time. Let's see here. Twitch app, Prime sub. I don't remember. The, so the Twitch Prime on the iOS app, I, I think that's been a, an actual problem for a while. But I know there's a way to do it, but it's hidden. And I know that's unintuitive. Um, let me see here. Let me pull it up on my own Lord, phone here. Lord Davey gave me a lol. Anna's painting is usually enough to get most of us to watch. Well, good. If that is true, then we're all awesome. Not that we all aren't awesome every day, but... So I'm just going to line around her face. I just like to do this because it kind of frames the face a bit. Even though this hair is going to go light, uh, probably go off-white since it's a frost giant eventually. Um, I like to just kind of have this shadow in so I can see more. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the just the bare bones color up against the face. And if I just do it now, if I line here now, then I can immediately touch it up, right? So it's easy to touch up when you just have a base coat down. So this is not a bad time to do it. Makes the face stand out more. Seven months surrendered. Oh my gosh. Good, Bandar. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it's easiest to use your browser. Um, I'm afraid that uh, Miss Dimp is correct. Twitch is just silly this way. We were discussing earlier that Twitch's um, app is ridiculously bad for a company that like depends on computer gaming streamers and other technological functions to survive. It feels it feels sometimes to me like it's a it's a totally tech unsavvy company running a tech company. <laughs> Let's just get this a little bit blended in. So lining around the face is something I always do. It, uh, it, as you can see, it makes the face stand out a lot better. Once I put the hair color in, it'll kind of I'll glaze or blend over it to blend it in a little better. It's very harsh right now, I know. Um, although I can pop some blue into it to soften it. There, there we go. Now her face is standing out a little nicer. I also like. On Discord. Yay, progress. Yes, happy time zone, Rathmore. I'm I'm also in a different time zone. Well, I think we're at this point we have so many people from different time zones watching. We almost span the world. Depending on if we have somebody over in Asia watching at like three or four AM. Alright, so the other thing I like to do on skin tones, so I like to fill in the eyes to outline them. It always looks weird to me to try to do skin without kind of blocking in my eyes. And I fill them in with a dark color. In this case, I've got walnut, so I'm filling them in with that. The sun never sets on the Reaper Empire. Exactly. Now I have to try to see this other eye. Sometimes it can be a challenge to see the sculpt. I think it's right there, though. I think I see the lower eyelid. Remember again, if you do this when you uh, when you've base coated, uh, it's a lot easier to touch up if you make a blorf. Blorf being a technical term. 
obviously. There, so I've got her eyes blocked in a little All bit. Right. So according to a quick uh, FAQ through Twitch itself, it looks like currently you cannot use your Prime sub through uh, through the iOS app. Oh, Twitch, you failed us. However, what you could do is uh, just go to Safari and then launch the – just go to Twitch manually through the uh, through the browser on your phone, and then you can do it that way. It's going to load the web page in a cumbersome manner, and it's going to try to send you to the app, but just tell it no. And then you just uh, – you can do it that way if you'd like to. The old school way. Twitch is asking us to be old school. Yeah, it's – it's um... Oop, Got to blurf, blurf. There. To Rathmore's point earlier, it is it is it is hamstrung by the uh, by the Apple like I guess App Store because they have to charge more. They use these tokens. And yeah, it's it's really it's not not great. Yeah, the problem with GIF and Gizzeri and all of those um, things, or Cluck, is that they are they are generally copyrighted by. Um, by uh wizards for D and um and you with with a gif it's just really hard to make something that um still looks like a gif but is far enough away from the uh ip that you won't get sued over it so <laughs> there are just some races you run into the same thing with things like beholders you have to change them sufficiently uh, to make them not beholders. And at that point, a lot of your audience is like, well, that doesn't really look like X, then I don't want it. So doing that sort of thing, that's why it's hard to find things for models for things like GIF. All right, let me make, I'm going to do a couple of different colors here. You can see I've got kind of a purpley color growing on. You can also see that transition color went kind of gray on me. And that is both because there is gray and ash and blue and because this pink has a little yellow in it. And so when you are mixing something like cross purposes here we're mixing red yellow and blue we're mixing three primaries you're gonna lose some of your saturation it's just the way it happens and awesome thank you midnight painter what Look happened they were they were yeah, bound to get their switch farm through and they did Yay. thank you so much that's awesome because you know that only puts us about 100 subs away from our goal for um the third friday of the month i think it's this i think it's actually today I will double check, but I'm pretty sure we're 100 subs away from doing another uh, mega giveaway. Uh, kind of not a mega. This one, the one we do twice a month, would be uh, the one that's a little bit smaller, but it's still like 150 minis. Oh wow, so nice! It's, it's, it's still a pretty big mini, or it's still a pretty awesome. big uh, giveaway. Hey, you did. Speaking of getting toward goals, you did write down the five subs we got yesterday, right? Yes, and I believe I have our total at 18. Awesome. All right, I'm going to mix this in, mix that in. That's fantastic. Which means we are 12 subs away from another... Counting the, counting the two we got today already? Oh, no, sorry. Uh, Ha-ha! Are... Yes, we are, we are 10 away from the queue. All right, so what I did here, guys, is I've got about three to three drops here. We've got three to three drops. These are the two colors that we're using. So a one-to-one -one ratio for the first highlight, um, which is Ash and Blue and Milani Rose. Let's raise them up so they're in focus. These are the two colors we're trying to make play nicely together because we want to add some pink, pink tones to our frost giant skin. So, um, so we've got a mixture of one to one, and then this one is like four or five drops of Milani Rose and one tiny drop of Ash and Blue because I wanted it to be more a little bit shifted, but a little more. So this is the transition we're trying to get. Now, one thing that I probably will do first is I will mix up. Just as if I was highlighting our ash and blue skin normally, I would make a mix of ash and blue and white to do a first layer of highlights on this overall skin. Because um, not all of the skin is going to be highlighted with pink. If you do that, then you end up with my uh, my Ginny model, who is like dawn colored skin. And that totally is a thing that you can do. Um, and it looks great on her, but uh, we're not aiming for that with this one. We're aiming to introduce oh. pink tones. Thank you, Solson, for the five gift bomb. Also, we oh, nice. three subs in, so we're actually at uh, we're actually at twenty eight currently. Wow, so we're almost that there. Up, that went up. We are we are literally two subs away from a Q &A. from another A and A. Awesome, 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 awesome. That's fantastic. AMA, I mean, yeah, and we want to do some lip color too. Also, you always paint the upper lip dark, guys. No matter what color you want to use, you can lighten it up if you think it's too dark when you get around to doing the lower lip. But no matter what color you want to do for this lower lip, the upper lip is always in shadow with an overhead light source. If you look at anybody's face who is near you, you will see that this is the truth. 
Um, so you want a very thin, you want, you want a dark shadow there. You can always uh, make it a little lighter if it looks too dark for you down the road. Just keep that in mind. That's something I see a lot of new painters just not, uh, not do is just at least put a line on the mouth. Um, you want to, if you don't put a line on the mouth, your mini's going to have zero expression. So, and, and one, one thin line is a little easier than trying to do say an upper lip. So you just try to do a thin line and air more toward the upper side of the mouth. And then you can start getting that effect. And it really enhances, she's got kind of a sneer on her right now. Um, but it enhances, uh, the expression of the model. We just got more gear, more subs. I guess we did it. Thank Whoa, you, Samurai, Samurai Jack, Jack. An image of a trail. I don't know, image of a trail. I think you're losing your your image there. You're being you're being too nice. Unless you're gonna you know immediately revert those subs and say, ha ha, new didn't get a sub after all. Then you be then it would be <laughs> betrayal, you know. But otherwise, I think maybe your your name is meaner than you are. Not that we're complaining. All right, where's my pure white? I'm gonna do a four drops of ashen blue and one drop of pure white to get a layer of highlight on this uh, skin before I go to pink. Thank you very much, Image. That's, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Pass we appreciate it. I'm, I'm teasing you, but it, it but it is really cool. We do love seeing people gift stuff and passing on the love. And thank you, Solison, for the 100 bits. That's also cool. Yay. You guys are being all kinds of generous today. Yeah. Uh, don't Happy forget, Friday. If you, if you like giving out subs, I think giving out subs on our 3 o'clock show is the perfect time to do it because we match all gifted subs. Oh, really? Yes, we do. For uh, Reaperland? For Reaperland. That's great. And that's with Dave and John, isn't it? Correct. And uh, being that it's, uh, I think last time I spoke to Dave, he wanted to try to give away maybe some stuff based on goals, like almost corresponding with the Bones 5 live update. Um, we may do bigger stuff once a month if we're like even better on goals, but I think he wanted to, he wanted to, basically incentivize you guys to kind of keep up our our sub goals i guess more during the month and then therein give away more minis and stuff so he's he's kind of hitting the nos there i want to say hmm. Hmm. so as it as it were yes i am just putting a quick highlight on the tops of the cheekbones on the top of the nose on those lower lids of the eyes this face is big enough that you can actually hit those things with highlights. If you can see the upper eyelid, you can try to hit that a little bit at the corner. Um, we want to hit the top of the chin with a highlight. Some of this stuff I'm going to go over with pink, but at least then I've got a basic highlight up. You want to, you always want to do this shelf at the top of the cheekbone to pick it up with a highlight. That's just how faces are highlighted. You take it up right up, right up to under the eye. And that's, I think, pretty good. Now we can start looking at where we're going to put our pink. So get your, and I'm, I'm not blending very well because I'm not thinning my paint very well here. Hold on. Let me blend those in. Sneak in to donate this afternoon. Spoon emote. A spoon emote. Planner wants a spoon emote. Reaper is a weight loss program because they had to decide between food and minis. <laughs> <laughs> that's great all right i'm thinning down my paint remember whenever you add white you have to thin your paint more to get a smooth layer right now i do not have a smooth layer you can see that that very obvious brush mark right at her jawline for example all right let's see here so i want to fix that so i've thinned down my paint a bit and I want to blend it in. And layering starts like blending. The best uh, paint consistency for blending can start at as little as like two to one paint to water. But then you're usually kind of creeping up from there toward one to one or even uh, two to one water to paint if you're using pure white. The, the direct, there's a direct correlation when you are trying to blend colors um, of uh, how light the paint is and how much water it requires to get it to play nice. So remember that. So we have highlighted some of her face now. Um, thank you for that raid, Red Wolf. Yeah, thank and you, thank Red you Wolf. For stopping by. 
It's nice to see you. And Bandar, yeah, it's a good hobby because it's hard to stuff food stuff your food hole while holding a mini and a paintbrush. Exactly. Um, oh, your secret safe with us, happy little minis. Yeah, we we don't out people for that. We know that uh, the significant others uh, get a little bit like antsy about that stuff. So you know, we we will we will hide your secret. All right, so here we go. I want to blend in these cheekbones a little bit. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come up from underneath. Get a little blending. I think her skin is almost where I would want to start introducing some shadows. You can see that the details of her face are starting to come out. Um, Miss Dimp, you still have to blend, right? And you, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't go highlight color so much. Eh, you can, like that's how watercolor painters paint, right? Um, but they're also dealing with transparent paints for the most part and not opaque paint. So uh, the answer is you can try it. Some colors I find work pretty well but I start with a mid-tone and go down and then up. Um, so it's like, I just work with white, I guess. I just, I'm used to having to thin it. It's not hard to use once you learn how to thin it. So if you're highlighting something up to pure white. Uh, but I find that, I find that the problem I run into when I start with a very pale color on a model and try to shade down is I don't get enough contrast. Like when I was working on my Siren Bust, uh, the skin, which is now mostly done, I started really pale with a really pale sandy color and I just started trying to layer it down and it just fought me. So for me, I find that I do not have enough depth if I start at a very pale color because the, the, I think because the tendency then is to go down only so far because you, you've started so light and then you, you maybe don't push your shadows as much as you should. You, and you lose a lot of depth because your color is so washed out to start with. So I think that depending on you, and if you're used to watercolor painting, you might get good mileage out of trying to do it that way, starting highlight and then working dark. Um, but otherwise, I think it can get you in a bit of trouble uh, if you're not used to really looking at highlights and shadows, you know, like a lot of, a lot of newer painters really aren't. Um, so I'd almost rather teach them just to thin, thin your paint more as it gets lighter. I mean, I give ratios. So, you know, you really, really can't go wrong as long as you uh, take some effort into learning to thin your paint and uh, apply it correctly. So, so yeah, I mean, your mileage may vary. Try it if you wish. I just find that my painting, I've tried it on a couple different models and my painting has just lacked depth. Um, so then I go back and I, I start with a darker color than, than a really light one. Ah, let's see here. Gray bound blue liner. Yay. Yeah. Liners are fun. I love, I love blue liner. Hey, Jason, how you doing? Hello. Right below the nose. Yeah, if I'm going to put in another shadow, I'm either going to, it depends on how high I'm going to take the skin, Valandar. Um, I just, I generally go for a range. Of, I would not use liner for that, though. Like, there is definitely a difference between the line of the mouth here, and I'll probably lighten the upper lip slightly, and the shadow under the nose. Um... Because the color is different, right? If you look at somebody's face in light, the the upper lip is generally going to appear darker than the underside of the nose. And it could be because the underside of the nose projects out more, so it's getting some bounce light from the environment usually. But you, I can't think of a, of a situation, in, unless you've got very harsh light, where the area under the nose is going to be as dark as the underside of the lip. So for me, if I was going to put a harder shadow in here, like if, if you're going to put harder shadows, you'd put them in, in here in the hollows of the eyes, under the nose. Um, we can do that. But I would actually mix this with a little bit of my walnut for that. Um, probably in like a, a three to one, like three parts ashen and, ashen blue and one part walnut. It gives you kind of that blue gray color. And I would just take that in to the shadows if I was going to go there. But... It's, uh, it's also varies too. If you're on a bigger model, then your upper lip isn't going to go as dark. You're going to get more bounce light. You also want a dark shadow underneath this, um, underneath this lower lip to kind of help define it. So, so I wouldn't, if I, but if I went black or close to black with it, like I did with the lips and the area around the eyes, it would really confuse things. Um, I think I don't have, do I have a bust close by? I don't think I have a bust that's really 
similar. Well, yeah, I guess I do. I have Viking. All right, so let's put Viking on camera for a moment. Let's pop off his hat. All right, so Viking here, he's got some extreme shadows under his eyes because he's got a helmet on. But so Viking here, his shadow under his nose is the same as his shadow under his eyes. Um, but under this top lip, I've gone a bit darker. Um, just because even if you, even if I put it here in natural light, like if I aim it toward my light source here, you can kind of see that the shadow under the nose, you still see the nose, whereas the shadow under the lip is quite dark because of the mustache and other things. So that's, that's what I'm essentially trying to imitate on her is the way I would highlight a more natural, bigger face. Um, hey, Epic Duck Studios. Thanks for the raid. Yeah. Just, just trying to catch raid. up here. That's awesome. Um, yay. Hello. Hello, everybody. I was just showing people my Viking bust to kind of illustrate shadows on a face, uh, even though he doesn't have a forehead because he's got a snaztastic helmet that I'm in the middle of painting. Um, but, uh, yeah, welcome to Mr. Viking bust. He's making a brief guest appearance. Uh, he will now go back to his hole. Hello. I am Viking bust. All right. Now he will go away. All righty. What we're really doing today is painting weird colors. Uh, so we're essentially working on this frost giant skin just to get it up to a decent skin level. And then I'm going to introduce pink tones into it to mimic blood flow. So what do we got? And a lot of people have frost giant models from Reaper because we started doing really awesome giants when we started doing bones. Uh, and I think bones five has some of the most awesome giants ever. I believe this is a frost giant ranger, right, Justin? Yes, that is frost giant yes. ranger. Yeah, it's not the ad adventurer has the swords, right? So... You know, sometimes I don't know anymore. Yeah, I know. We've got, you know, I always mix those two up. I have both. I'm going to have to hold on to the Frost Giant uh, Adventurer because she's like all armor and weapons. So I really can't do skin tone demos or anything else on her. She's got very little. She's got some fur, I suppose. I could do that. So, all right. I put a lot of white into this. So let's illustrate this point about, you know, the more white you add or the lighter color you're using, the more white you have to add to it to make it blend right blend it smoothly. So I'm probably got it about a one-to-one -one right now, but I'm betting that that's going to leave brush strokes. I'm going to actually add in, go to, go to almost two to one, which is two to one water to paint. So it's very thin. You would only ever thin white or close to white colors this much. Um, and if you are working with a paint line that is not master series, your mileage may vary because master series is one of the only paint lines on the market they can take this much thinning and still hold together. Yes, definitely come and join the fun of the Reaper Discord. Uh... Oh, I didn't know that. Re remember to remove the referral raid part on the website address. Oh, okay. Yay. All right. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bandar. It's 44124 Frost Giant Ranger. We were correct. <laughs> oh, and thank you, Planer, for linking my Patreon. Um, I'm Anne, guys. I, uh, I work for Reaper. Um, I used to work for Reaper full-time and actually created all of the paint lines that Reaper currently uh, uses, utilizes. Um, so I created MSP and uh, Pathfinder and Bones. Um, and now I, I actually moved out to the West Coast to be with my guy uh, just this month, earlier this month. I can't believe it's only... It hasn't even been a month yet, Justin. Ah, um, but uh, when I did, I went freelance, so now I depend on my Patreon for most of my income, and then Reaper, you know, pays me a little bit for these streams uh, because they're awesome. But uh, yeah, my Patreon is patreon.com slash paintingbig. Um, the thing that we can't do on streams here uh, is PDFs and, you know, stuff like that, and I do a lot of that on my, uh, my Patreon, so... Go and take a look. I've got some free content up. I've got a really fun bit of, bit of content up. I think that I did make free. Uh, that is my random color scheme generator table because I grew up on D&D, &D, like the first bit of D&D, &D, and, and there were lots of tables. And so that is a, a callback to, uh, to the lots of tables days of D&D. &D. And you can actually build a decent color scheme with it. So I'm going to highlight more of this bulge up at the top. Any Anytime you've got a forehead showing, there's, it's going to catch the light up here at the top. And then usually the brow ridge here is also going to catch the light. She has a lot of forehead. Um, so to keep her looking from looking like a Neanderthal, I probably would blend down a little bit here and uh, blend in these areas a little bit more. 
So we got, let's see, get in focus. There we are. There we are. Excellent. So yeah, interesting. I didn't know that the view didn't count to the numbers if you're uh, if you enter a uh, stream through a raid unless you remove that last part up on your browser line. That's good. It's a good tip, Planner. Thanks. Hey, Jacob, how's it going? Oh, cookies. I am so baking this weekend, you guys. I'm so baking. I have not baked since I moved, and I haven't baked since well before I moved because I was packing everything. And I'm so itching to bake. I have the um, British Bake Off, the Great British Bake Off, Big Book of Baking. And I've been itching to try some of those recipes gluten-free because I do everything low carb lower carbon gluten-free. So I just got my rice flour. I just got my yeast in the mail. I am set and so psyched to bake this weekend. Then I'm going to make banana bread because David is a banana bread fiend and so am I. We've, we're, we're sitting here. We have one banana sitting on the counter and we bought it when it was not brown and now it is slowly being brown. It's like we, we sit and stare at it every day. We're just like brown faster because when you make banana bread, you want your banana to be truly ripe. So in other words, black. Otherwise, you don't get that great banana e flavor. Um, online and it was not, uh, it was on Amazon. It was not cheap, but oh my gosh, like you've got some of the really awesome restaurant restaurant, uh, recipes in there, Twisted Oma. It gives some of the profiles of some of the bakers. Um, David and I love that show too. We actually started watching it together shortly after we started dating. Uh, it's been, we've now gone through all the seasons on Netflix. I'm sad because we won't get a new season because of the, the current situation. Uh, we won't get a new season for a while, but I do love it. And I, I want to set out to, uh, yeah, I want to set out to make some of those recipes gluten-free and low-carb. So, you know, I challenge myself uh, because of my diet. But but I have the flowers to do it. So now I can start experimenting. And actually, <laughs> experimenting is my favorite part of cooking and baking. Uh, since I do have kind of an odd diet, I've just gotten very used to uh, doing it. And uh, I've gotten to really enjoy experimenting to see if I can make a recipe low-carb and gluten-free and still taste awesome. Most of the time, the answer is yes, because gluten-free uh, flours are really good these days. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I'm glad that some of the contestants uh, have opened bakeries. That's just awesome. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, thanks for the, yeah, thanks for the Epic Deck Studios. Thanks for that uh, tip there. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I know. Some of the things they do on that show, if you at all like, like, uh, oh, what was the other one? There's like Ace of Cakes or any of those shows that Food Network has had and you haven't seen Great British Bake Off, you must run and go and watch it on Netflix. Um, seriously, it is, it, it will inspire you. You will want to make all sorts of tasty things. Um, you will not lose weight. <laughs> Disclaimer, uh, it is definitely a show that makes you want to make tasty things that you probably should not eat a lot of. So cut all those recipes into quarters so that you don't end up with a giant batch of, uh, four, you know, 24 chocolate filled croissants or something. Yeah, that would be, that'd be tragic. Up oh, too much, too much highlight there. Need to knock that back. There we go. Pick up a little shadow and do that. All right. So we got a nicely highlighted face now, but now we need some other colors. Oh, it gave you, I believe it said me like it. It gives me cravings because the stuff looks good, but it more just makes me want to bake. Um, so, yeah. So this is the Frost Giant. Uh, she has currently just her blue skin. The blue that we started with, guys, is uh, a color that I think is underrated. I use it for a lot. Uh, 9057 Ashen Blue. It also makes a great sky color for Chrome NMM, for Sky Earth NMM, if you're doing silver, steel, or Chrome. Um, it's, it was my go-to for that actually. And I love it. It's just a beautiful, soft, muted blue, uh, blue gray. Uh, I'm a big fan of blue grays, so it can be used for a lot of different stuff. Uh, so yeah, we've highlighted her skin pretty, pretty straight up by using mixtures of that with white. So we have our like four drops of ashen blue and one drop of white. And here we've got more like three or four drops of white with one or two drops of ashen blue, um, that we had to thin a lot to make it blend because when you add a lot of light to something, white to something, you've got to thin it down to make it layer nicely. Um, so this is more like almost a two to one water to paint mixture, whereas this one is more of a one to one. So the lighter your color, the more water you have to add to get it to layering consistency where it blends nicely. Just remember that. 
All right, so now we're ready to put in our pink tones. We've got our colors mixed up here. We've got about a one-to-one. -one. This purpley color is a one-to-one. -one. Um, and then we've got more like a four drops of pink to one drop of ashen blue. Uh, we mixed a little shadow here to put under the, the in the eye sockets and under the nose. And that was uh, more like probably a three-to-one ashen blue to uh, walnut brown because I have walnut open for my liner. Walnut brown. Let's see. Let's put all the colors out in front of you guys, right? Because we're at this point using... And just uh, as an aside, and for those of you who were who have watched my paint along video on the Patreon that I put up last night, um, Ashen mixing walnut brown with almost any mi middle color will give you a decent shadow. So Ashen blue is kind of a middle; it's not too light. So mixing a tiny bit of walnut brown worked with it. All right, I failed, but it tasted good. See, that's with me, Everlina. I'm going to try to make these recipes gluten free and low carb, and I fully expect to fail at least once, but it will taste good. <laughs> It may not look like it should. It may not quite function like it should, but it should be tasty. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do like the Bake Off because of that positive attitude. Yeah, just what you were saying up there. Yeah, Kariniko. I'm not a big reality TV fan otherwise, and I really don't like it when it gets really competitive and mean. I, a lot of people love that stuff. I don't. I really don't need that in my life. Um, so... I love Bake Off because everybody really does care about each other and tries to help each other um, and that the show doesn't doesn't uh, diss them for that, right? Uh, it's actually one of the features of it. So yes, if you love baking or cooking shows and you have not seen Great British, Great British Bake Off, there are lots of seasons up. If you need something to binge watch in these times, do it. Do it. You will, you will thank me and then you will curse me because you will want all those cakes and cookies and buns and oh my God, there's so much awesome stuff. Um, Three and a half minutes short for good omens based on Crowley. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly, Zuo. It's it's not Baker versus Baker. It's Baker versus Ingredients herself. Yeah, it is, weirdly, right? Well, Alton, Alton Brown is awesome. Like, no Zeke, any anything. Like, But yeah, Cut Tour Kitchen gets a little bit too much for me. Like I like Alton, but I don't. It's not enough. I, I really, uh, really can't do it. Hey, Grazi, Eddie, you just gave us another sub. Hey, we have to schedule um, our next uh, AMA. Should we make it for next Friday, Justin? Or uh, yes, I think we can do that. Yeah, because I want to. I want to set up David as a guest um, streamer at some point for one of these Fridays, but I kind of think that uh, we'll need some time to to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, Valandar. I like shows like that. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I don't like people crying. I'm not a fan of the little reality breakdown thing. Um, oh, God. Custard tarts. Yeah, there's so much. Like, British British food gets, gets knocked a lot, but oh my gosh, they have some amazing desserts. All right, so I'm going to put some water into my little pale highlight color here. It's been sitting here since the start of the show, so it's gotten a little viscous. It's still perfectly usable. This is where when you're using a well palette, just do kind of keep an eye on your paint. You can usually tell when it loses the glossiness um, on the surface that it's getting a little bit goopy or you can test it by pushing your brush into it. And if you get kind of pushback and it's getting a little bit of a skin, that's when you want to throw some water into it. A couple drops and then you can tune it from there. So here, the areas of the skin that typically get rosiness are going to be the cheeks and around the nose um, and obviously the mouth. You sometimes will get a little bit of color like coming off the nose up on, for, for women especially, especially for younger girls. You get a little bit of a blush coming through here um, and then you get pink down here and pink there. Obviously pink over here. So those are the areas you want to kind of uh, focus on. You don't want to make the entire nose pink usually unless you're painting a dwarf who's a drunkard. Um, you will see a redder nose, obviously, if somebody's been drinking. This lady doesn't seem like she's been drinking. She seems like she's been trekking in the wilderness. I don't see, actually, although she has the deer snack pack, she does not have the keg. Uh, so I'm going to assume that she looks grumpy because she is looking for her neighbor, friend, friendly neighborhood, St. Bernard, to come and give her a tipple. Um, but let's see here. We're da -da 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 -da, just looking at stuff, making sure I'm not missing anybody. All right, so let's do some of this purpley color. We want to thin it down so it's quite transparent. 
Usually I do, with light colors, I'll do the fingernail test. Because putting it on the palette, sometimes you can't see it. So you want it to be, that's still a little thick because I can see all my brush strokes. So a little bit more water into it. I'm guessing it's about 1.5 to 2 at this point. So like um, 4 to 6 paint to water. Load up your brush just a little. You only want a little bit of paint on it. And you want to stroke in the opposite direction of where you want to leave it. So I'm going to kind of go like up and on here and try to put a layer of pinkish color down. I've got a little bit too much paint on my brush. So let me, well, I've got pink. And you, the thing is you don't want to lose this darker shadow up the bridge of the nose. So you do want that, but then you want a little pink coming up. And you don't want the pink to spread all the way across the top of the cheekbone or it's going to look like she's blushing. So there we go. That's a little bit. I kind of want to, let me see if I can get away with my light here. That is going to really wash her out. Nope, we need... I'm trying to figure out the best balance of lighting to to have here. So I'm going to try to paint in that little purple, purpley pink area right here on the top of the cheekbone toward the nose. That's why I'm saying it's like hard to do some of this stuff sometimes on models that are smaller. It's hard to... Uh, you, don't, you don't have a lot of room, right? So I'm just going to put some of that pinky purpley stuff. And I got a little bit off camera there, here. And I got a little bit too much, there we are. All right, let's try to do some blush. I'm just laying down this purple coat as a base to help the pink blend in. So I don't necessarily want it to be really strong, but I want it to be there because it's gonna help my pink blend into the rest of the face. Can also put a little bit, we do want to put a little bit usually around the nostrils. There's usually a little pink. You can put a little pink around the nose. You just don't want to paint the entire nose pink unless you're trying to imply something about lifestyle choices. And now we want to get this entire area under the cheek. And it may be that our Milani Rose is just a little bit light because we may be wiping out the cheekbone shadow by doing this. So we may need to reach for a slightly darker pink to get this shadow area pinked out. We'll see. This can be the problem uh, when you're trying to add color to a face if you're starting with a really light pink but there are some areas that you have to put in shadow that you're supposed to put in shadow, like the cheekbones. So we may have to actually mix a darker pink. And the way you mix a darker pink is you grab your friend Clear Magenta. And then maybe you do a little mixture and you say, well, I need some of this awesome purpley color, which is half and half Ashen Blue and Milani Rose. And I'm going to grab what looks like three good drops of it. Now I have to keep in mind that it's thinned, so I probably want to use just one drop of clear magenta. This is going to really pink it out, but I need that shadow. So there, half a drop probably. I just squeezed it out kind of onto the side of the palette. Let's see what this makes. Woohoo! Oh, wow. Boo. Clears um, add so much vibrancy because they're so heavy pigment. But that is a darker color now, so we can probably get away with it on that cheekbone. Again, the key is to thin it down. If you're trying to blend two colors together that are weird, like this pink over this blue, thin them down or do mixes or both. All righty. Yes. It's a special effects makeup show. Interesting. Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen things from that, Valandara, that makeup show. There's some crazy stuff they do. And hey, you can learn a lot about shading and highlighting faces and skin. So now I'm going to glaze this pink kind of down on the lower part of this. And I like it. It's, uh, it's darker now, so it doesn't fight. So not the upper part of the cheekbone, but the lower part of the cheekbone and the shadow is where you see pink color on a face. So that's where you want to focus your rosy colors. That... And again, this area around the nose, I'm going to add just a tiny bit up here on the bridge of the nose, tiny bit on the other side here where it's darker and a little bit around the nose itself, around the nostrils, 
that's where you find those pink tones. So now we've got some, some pink on her face. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. So it's getting a little bit more dimension here. Um, skipping. Uh, so exactly what I'm doing, right? I needed, I needed a pop of pink of more intense, darker color to get this blush color to work being in the shadows here. I needed to be darker because it's in the shadows. So I grabbed clear magenta to, because I knew I, that it would darken it and add vibrancy. It would add a big pop of pink to it. Um, clears are for doing that. They're for making colors brighter by mixing into them without losing the coverage of the original color. Because by themselves, clears do not cover very well. That's why they're called clears. Clears are a single pigment in a clear base. And so they're really good for mixing. They're also really good for intensifying colors through mixing and through glazing. So if you make um, a thin wash or glaze of them, like if you have a red cape that you're painting and you're like, oh, well, this is red, but it could be, it could be more vibrant. Um, I wish it was a brighter red. You could build like a glaze or a wash of clear red and just put that over the top and it would brighten up that entire cape without you having to do anything else. I actually did that. Hmm, sadly, I did it before on a different model. Um, but every once in a while I do talk about the clears. They are extremely useful. I often paint entire models with them, uh, just because they're so good for mixing. But, uh, there, if you need an intense pop of color, they're your baby. They're also great for glow effects, glowing effects, because they're so bright. All right, got some pink. Now I'm losing a little bit of my blue, so I want to grab my intermediate shade here and probably go a little bit. Let me see, make sure I'm on camera. There we go. Her face, her face is just a little tight for this, but we'll see. So I'm going to carry with my um, lavender color, I'm going to carry this area down a little bit into this blush to blend it. There. So your intermediate grit area, the, your intermediate color, this lavender, is useful when you're bridging like this area with your blush area. And remember, see, I'm not losing my blue here on the top of the cheekbone since we're a natural. That's why we put down our highlights first with the blue itself so that we wouldn't lose some of that color and we don't have to worry about going in and highlighting after the fact. So that's getting there. Um, yeah, clear purple is cool. Uh, landscape artist of the year and portrait artist of the year, British programs. Oh, cool. Neat. Okay. Let me make a, a note of that. I think that David is probably still, he ventured out to, uh, to the store this morning because he's a wonderful man and uh that means that i need to write this down so landscape artist of the year and portrait artist all right thanks thanks for that recommend uh twisted oma we will definitely look those up because we were going to watch the original original Cosmos um, as our next series. We're, right now we're watching Lego Masters, which is a little bit too reality TV for me, but the Lego builds are amazing. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Clear yellow over a white base coat. Yeah, if you're doing superhero and you want really that bright um, watching on YouTube. All right, so I'll put down they might be on YouTube. Cool. Thanks for the recommend. Yeah, now that our bake-off is over, we're looking at other stuff. All right, so I've got some purpley pink on her cheeks. Let me see. Yeah, you can see it. You can see that I've got some blush there. Um, I'm going to take the blush up here even lighter. Bring this highlight in. Um, probably hit her nose a little bit up. Oh, I've got too much paint on my brush. Whenever you see a puddle, whenever you're trying to work on something fine, like a face, pay attention to how the paint looks when you lay it down. When you see a puddle, when you touch your brush down, you've got too much paint on your brush. Definitely rinse out your brush and reload. And when you reload, only use a little bit of your brush. See here, I've only got about half of my brush, uh, done. And you want to be able to draw a nice thin line with it like that on my fingernail thin lines thin lines that are controlled see those yeah i i, will, I don't want to watch bad tv like that is not why i watch reality tv i like to watch skilled people doing awesome things um 
I do not feel the need. I watch so little TV, guys, that I didn't even own a TV for the last uh, 20 years. Didn't feel the need. Never bothered. Had more important things to do with my life. So I'm very selective about what I watch. Um, like, I usually, I joke that I only watch one TV show a decade, and it wasn't up until this point where David likes to watch a little more. Um, it was true. So... I, I don't believe in, I don't like background noise. Like usually when I paint, I just put on music or I don't have anything going on. So, uh, it's, uh, it's not really easy for me to just absorb a bunch of media, uh, because I always would rather focus. So yeah, means I'm picky about what I watch. I am actually going to use this darker pink to kind of block in her lower lip, add some color to that lower lip. And it will actually make that color look more natural. I wish, yeah, you can see the pink a little bit there now. It's subtle, but it's there. Yeah, good for you, Planner. I, I, do, I do not own a TV, but David does, so uh, we have one. So he does like to uh, kind of chill in the evenings uh, a bit. He likes background noise, although we try to, he tries to do just podcasts or something for me or audiobooks. Because uh, he knows I'm not a big fan. We watch a little TV before bed and that's it. All right, so we've got some serious pink tones coming up on her face now. We've got our pinky shadow underneath the, uh, underneath there, and we've got our pinky shadow on the other cheekbone. We've got a little bit of pink around the nose. We've got pink on that lower lip. I'm kind of thinking I want an even punchier pink on that lower lip. I don't know. I guess she wouldn't be wearing makeup, but I want a little bit more. So I'm going to punch this pink up a little more. We'll grab our clear magenta. Put a little drop down and we'll make a slightly darker pink for that lower lip. We don't want it too crazy. We want to mute it just a little bit. That's not bad. Make sure she, we've got her there. Yeah, I just can't do background noise. I, I didn't grow up doing it. I spent a lot of time, I kind of liked quiet when I was a kid, so I really don't like having a lot in the background. I like music because it can get me in a positive mood for painting. Um, but other than that, I really am not a background noise fan. It distracts me more than anything, and so I just don't do it. I think it's maybe because uh, my parents didn't like always have the TV on when we were kids. So I just got used to not having it on and I spent a lot of time in my room, which was quiet by my choice or if I had anything going, it was music. So yeah, not a, I'm not a big media consumption person, which is why I appreciate very specific. Uh, you know, I appreciate it when you guys suggest a show because then I don't have to, I, I can find something good without going and trolling through all the, everything that's out there. All right, so you got a little bit more pink on that lip there. Yeah, Bex, I think David is a lot like that. He likes to have something on and I just, I like quiet. Everybody to, the, to their own, right? Everybody's different. All right, little highlight on that lower lip. All right, so let's see here. What do I need to do? I need to add some more light pink up there off the nose. And I'm gonna reach for our Milani Rose with just a tiny bit of Ashen Blue in it. This may be too strong. I think I need to add more water. Lots of water in these paints because we're working so light. Lots of lots of lots of water. Who oh, knows? Groundhog Day, anyone? Oh, who knows? We have we have problem with stream, Justin. Hmm. Apparently, for more than one person. I wonder if it was a twitchy thing. Yeah, I don't have any uh, issues on the bat. I don't have any errors. Though, yeah, on my end, mine but. does not say any drop frames or anything, and it usually does tell me. A little bit of pink here on top of the upper part of the, mm, her okay. nose here. What do we get? I, I'm missing. It was Twitch. Oh, okay. okay. Twitch is twitching. It's Friday and Twitch wants to go. It wants its weekend to get here. 
I'm going to add a little bit of this light pink over here next to the nose under the eye to blend in the pink of the blush. Might need to grab a little bit of the blush and kind of blend that in next to it. Uh, Red Z, this is a, um, it's an IPVO document camera. Oh yeah. Um, oh, somebody asked about yeah. the awesome camera. Yes, yes, yes. It is awesome. Um, Red Z. It is, uh, I tried using a mini, uh, a, a webcam and it just is horrible with the focus and everything. And, uh, this sucker lets me get really nice, crisp, clear. Uh, yeah. IPVO, I-P-E-V-O. And it's a dot cam. It's one of their, uh, something Z or X. I don't remember. It's the turquoise one. It's, uh, I could, I could move my face cam so you could see it more. Let's see. Oh, almost, almost. There it is. So you can see the little arm if you look at the face cam. And it's nice because it has swivels. So actually to avoid casting a shadow from the window here, I've got it slightly off kilter and I can turn this so that I'm uh, level. Um, it has a little onboard light, but right now this model is too bright to really let that work. There's too much glare. So I think I'm getting a better, better picture just doing natural light. It varies. Um, I also have a big ring light set up and some other lights that I do or don't use depending on uh, various stuff. There I am. Now I'm centered. Great. Awesome. Alrighty. Uh, but yeah, I moved to the dot cam because Justin had a, kind of an older model of dot cam that we were playing with when I was still at Reaper. Uh, and I really liked how crisp it could get, how, how high megapixel it could get, because of course it's supposed to be, you know, pick up tiny lettering clearly. So they're made for that. Right. But it seemed like I was looking at, um, Amazon. It seems like a lot of teachers were using them for their classes uh, and that they were pretty much lasting all day. And then it was like people were experimenting with streaming with them because they had streaming capability um, uh, and, and yeah, and could be recognized by, by software like OBS. And so, yeah, I, I decided to give it a go and picked it up and I really love it. So I'm going to move my palette back a little bit here. There we go. So now you can see the rosy tones on the sides of her cheeks. I could probably blend a little bit more there. I probably want to reach for my half and half there um, to kind of bring in this purple right on that line between the two to make them blend a little better. And then I need to bring that cheekbone up a bit more. So that's a natural highlight. And I might do just a little bit of a line, a bright line right under that lower eyelid. So you can see that eye. It's a little bit, I think I went a little bit high with the highlight there though. I lost some of my shadow. This could be titchy. There, a little bit of our shadow there. I'm getting some reflection from the window as well. Let's see here. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, but we're all, we don't do free on this on this particular stream, although we are working on giveaways for this. Um, Justin and I have been working on it now that the show is kind of established. Uh, we do instead an AMA where a number of subs adds up to um, me pretty much taking all questions and doing demos and stuff, uh, which is fun. So right now we do that, but we will work up to a free at some point in the future. Yeah, this is just a wonderful quality cam. I agree. I, I was so happy that I bought it. Apparently now that everybody is trying to do um, online stuff with uh, with the stay-at-home orders and everything, apparently it's hard to get these. There we go. Now you can see the pink. Um, but yeah, this lets me... This I, I was getting frustrated because a lot of the stuff I do is pretty subtle and a lot of cams couldn't pick it up really well. So this one does. And so I really, really appreciate that, um, that I can show the subtlety uh, of my painting on this. Oh, you got one? Yeah, yeah. Someone buy me kidney, buy my kidney. So you don't need a kidney. Uh, this one was three hundred when I got it, which is not not cheap. Uh, was definitely an investment, and my Patreon actually helped me afford that. So thank you, people who are on my Patreon. Not only do you help me actually like buy food now, but you also paid for my document camera, um, and all my lights and all my all my awesome setup. So thank you. I do really appreciate you, Patreon guys, especially now when I know so many of you are, are uh, having, you know, troubles with jobs and all this stuff. All right. A little bit more of the clear magenta mix under here. I do need to highlight her upper lip. I kind of forgot to. That's another place that would get a natural highlight, not necessarily right under the nose, um, although I usually will outline the upper lip a little bit, but let's take some highlight color and do that. 
So this turned into faces and weird colors and frost giant skin. I hope you guys didn't mind that we, we mud, muddied up our topic a little bit today. Let me see. I got to make sure you're in focus. There we go. So I start and I stroke down toward the upper lip because I want the highlight to be right above the lip. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. Now, whether you emphasize or de-emphasize this crease around the mouth is going to really, um, really uh, reflect whether you want her to look older or younger. A younger face, de-emphasize this line. Uh, unless, of course, you've got a frown on like this chick does, and then you may want to just leave it on just for expression. But leaving lines on the face really does um, accentuate it, it, the look of that she's older. So... Do keep that in mind when you're highlighting. I definitely have a rough highlight here. There we go. Maybe I got that a little smoother. Okay. You a good girl, Kiri? Oh, is he? <laughs> Kiri's like all restless. And I'm like, no, dog, don't have a dog emergency. But then I think she just uh, heard David come in and he's unwrapping groceries. So Kiri's food radar is going off. And I think she probably wants to go out and see him, but well, we're almost done with our stream, right? Yeah, we are. All right. So if she has a dog emergency at this point, it's not too bad. All right. So there we go, guys. Um, blending in some pinks. This face is a little hard to show it all. Big broad muscles would have been easier, but at least you get an idea of how I would go about adding like, like blush tones to an unusual skin tone. You could also add a little pink up here on the forehead if you wanted, but be careful. A lot of foreheads tend not to have a lot of like pink color on them. Um, so yeah, so there we go. There's our little frost giant skin tutorial. Yeah, it can look, you can use this to create semi iridescent or pearlescent color combos just because people are not used to seeing certain colors highlight other ones. Um, in the future, I'll do a weird colors uh, where we try to blend two really different colors like these. Um, that was originally kind of my plan, but then I realized I was doing a frost giant and people wanted frost giant skin. So why not? Uh, so yeah. Yeah, you got to look at the different IPVOs. Uh, Non-Wi-Fi non IPVOs will be cheaper. Um, you know, newer, newer and older models, there'll be a price difference. So yeah. All righty. All right, we well, I've got a raid for us. Oh, who are we raiding? Just Dices. Oh, all right. We haven't raided Dices in a while. That's great. Super awesome. Thank you guys for coming to my Friday stream. It's been our casual Friday stream. Um, and I really appreciate you. I love it when you come to view and talk to us. And welcome to our new people. Uh, I do this every day around uh, 1130 a.m. Central Time, USA Time. Uh, and uh, so Monday through Friday. And then later today we have Reaper Land at 3 p.m. where John and Dave talk about what all the bone stuff uh, is. That what they're talking about? Yeah. They're, well, it's more of a community-driven show. Oh, point. okay. So all right. Good. So it's all sorts of, of Q and A and fun and, and Reaper Bones with Dave and uh, and Dave is one of our owners. And then John, who does our social media, so that's fun. And then uh, were we doing? We we have a Bones Five live update right yep. afterwards. Yeah, that's what I was seeing. The, mm -hmm. uh, we have the D&D &D show tonight at, I believe, 6. Um, oh, okay. And that will be on our channel, and it'll be sponsored by Nightheart Gaming. Wow, Or awesome. Sidway, if she is in chat here. Oh, okay. Uh, that is also Anne, and she's awesome, too. So. Oh, awesome. Yay, good. Yeah, so we've got constant programming from, like, 3 p.m. on, guys. So, like, if you just want to hang out and use us as background noise and maybe learn a few things that are interesting, do it. And, and totally, like, join in uh, watching our D&D &D game uh, with the sculptors yep. and Reaper employees tonight. Alrighty? All right. Thanks, All right. guys. Keep Have being a good awesome. One. Spread the Reaper love. And uh, we'll see you later today. See you guys.